Hello, introducing this presentation. I have to say my name is Henry Santiago Valarza Massa. I'm a student for Universidad Católica Santiago Guayaquil. And this is a presentation made for my English medic class and my doctor is John Moscoso and my subject is about variconazole in those various studies. So starting with the definition. We are going to see that this is an agent, broad spectrum antifungal, that is available in both IV doses as oral. So this drug is used for treat fungus infection, like infection of candida. And periostitis is also known as periostalgia, is a medical condition caused by inflammation of the periosteum, a layer of connective tissue that surrounds bone. The condition is generally chronic and it's marked by tenderness and swelling of the bone and pain. Fungi are eukaryotic organisms which possess a unique cell wall and cell membrane that can serve as targets for antifungal agents. The ACE family of drugs specifically target the fungal cell membrane. The cell membrane of fungi is similar to that of other eukaryotic cells and is composed of a lipid bilayer with proteins embedded within it. A major component of the fungal cell membrane is the presence of sterols, which are virtually absent from all prokaryotes, including bacteria. One of the essential sterols in the fungal cell membrane is ergosterol. In most fungi, it replaces the cholesterol component found in higher eukaryotic cell membranes. Ergosterol provides stability and flexibility to the fungal cell membrane. Lanosterol serves as the precursor for the formation of ergosterol. Although many enzymes are involved in the formation of ergosterol, the 14-alpha dimethylase enzyme is responsible for the C14-alpha methylation of lanosterol. It is an essential enzyme that serves as a target for azole antifungal agents. Although some azoles have an immediate effect of damaging the fungal cell membrane directly, the major mechanism of action is by binding to the cytochrome P450 mediated 14-alpha dimethylase enzyme thus inhibiting the demethylation of lanosterol and blocking the synthesis of ergosterol. In turn, this results in an accumulation of 14-alpha-methylsterols and a depletion of ergosterol in the cell membrane. The lack of ergosterol in the fungal cell membrane makes it very unstable. Eventually, the cell membrane begins to break down and the fungal organism dies. So, continuing, the application in medicine, this is important because the reason of this subject is to talk about a problem that mariconazole produce in patients that are treated with this drug. Well, this drug is generally well tolerated, however, it has been recently implicated in diffuse painful periostitis in adult solid organ and bone marrow transplant patients who received long-term mariconazole. Because mariconazole contains fluorine, the mechanism of toxicity is suspected to be the accumulation of fluoride. That is in Gilgil, claim that their only source of water in the area has so much fluoride that it is a danger to their health. KTN's virtual Manza has the details. in Kariandosi, Gilgil, are now playing foul over what they call the inevitable. Many here complain of health complications. They believe or continue from what for many years they have known as safe water. This really remains their only source of water. And though it looks clean, the residents claim it has a high quantity of fluoride that has affected their teeth and bones. Ata hii mtoto ni mezalia hapa ki. Na nana ato ni ya fluoride. Aside from the case of Dr. Vivian Mbui, 
in Helen Muzomi, both still in the early 20s. Salsina, Menokumi, Tiali, Mishawa. Mika, Kapuka, Kiberi, Siezi Kula, Miwa, Siezi Kula. Another lady, Miriam Mwangui Kariuki, says she has suffered weak and aching bones condition for over 28 years now. And at only 53, Miriam now works like a centenarian. Dakari Aliniabia, Mifupa, Mekuluwa, Nayo, Flora, Mirikuwa, Pisa, Na Dakari Aliniabia, Kaka, Mama Yaga, Sida, Kwa Imeabia. Na Kira, Kwa Maliwa, Uwebe, Kinyata, she decided to construct a tank that taps living water just to help her next generation not to suffer the same misery she's going through after using this hot salty water. We sought the views of a specialist and according to Dr. Silvanus Baraza, a dentist in Nakuru, not all complications of this nature in the area can be associated with excessive fluorine since the fluoroxis condition is not common among those above 18 years. The effect of fluoride does not have to come after the age of 18 for the bones, even on the teeth. Because at this time, uh, the teeth are fully classified. And also the bones are also ceased to, to grow. So maybe this, it could be maybe the effect of maybe the cashew. just a normal decay and if it is fluorosis then it must have occurred before the age of 18 though further checkup may be required somebody can afford to buy a distiller that a small house or distiller somebody can buy and they can use at home for small kids just at the time when they start uh, winning that is they start taking the foods apart from the milk that is the age of six months you should make sure that these children they do not consume uh, high fluoride water. We are going to the government to know this. And I want to mention, let me explain the language. So the important thing about the before video was that even in water you can find fluoride and it can produce fluorosis in our teeth and bones. So the pros about this drug about a part of that that when it produces periost periostitis the discontinuum of this drug led to the resolution of pain within 48 hours and radiographs revealed diffuse periostitis so it's easy to diagnose this this illness and markers as increased plasma alkaline phosphatase helps with diagnostic too like this osteoarthropathy is a uh, syndrome which is associated with the proliferation of skin and the bone now mainly what we see here is the periosteogram the periosteogram reaction can be a dense linear symmetrical periosteogram reaction it can be exuberant or it can be fluffy or it can be linear type periosteogram So if you, as you can see, the prominence in the bones shows the inflammation of the periosteum. And the cons about this drug is that fluorine influence in clearance of a drug as well as the road and rate of metabolism and the chemical structure of 
particle also contains three fluorine atoms. A uh, 400 milligrams dose contains 65 milligrams of fluoride. So that's the reason that it can produce peristitis. So, as you can see, it can be present in, even in water. So, in Ecuador, some recommendations about period studies is to regulate the intensity of work. I mean, you should deload the strain that you make on your muscles to prevent it can happen like problems of inflammation even you can at the, at the time you're working out you won't feel anything but after that you will feel, you will feel a lot of pain and it can even develop through a middle and long term and of course you should do the exercise correctly and it's convenient to advise to be advised from an expert at the time of working out before we start doing this so another recommendation is just to leave workout leave workout at all at the time that you feel pain And the conclusion, I mean, this drug is an agent, as we said, a broad spectrum antifungal that is available in both IV doses as oral doses. And the skeletal fluorosis that we mentioned is a bone disease caused by excessive accumulation of fluoride in the bones. And in advanced cases, the skeletal fluorosis causes painful damage to bones and joints, and this is the, probably the reason of the peristalsis induced by variconazole. But the good thing about this is this discontinuation of this drug going, is going to lead to the resolution of the pain within 48 hours. And we are going to finish this presentation with a video. We've had a series of uh, agents, uh, azoles, uh, obviously fluconazole the first one, then voriconazole, itraconazole, posiconazole, and the Basilea product uh, is isobuconazole. Now, this, this agent uh, has a pretty excellent to tolerability record from the, uh, the phase three data. Uh, uh, obviously, it's been used for treatment, and it showed non-inferiority against voriconazole for treatment. Uh, it does have less toxicity than uh, voriconazole, and on top of that, it does 
would have significant activity against mucosis, which is a major issue in, in centres where they see a significant advantage. So I think it's a useful step forward. It has an oral and an IV formulation, which is essential uh, in the treatment of sick patients. And I, I hope to see over the ensuing years, not just the, the treatment data uh, being uh, shown further in, in clinical practice, but also perhaps even prophylaxis data with the same thing.